What's going on guys? This is Von Alec Puma, back with another Fallout 76 video, and today I wanted to talk about the extreme amount of backlash that Fallout 76 has been getting and give you guys some of my opinions on it. In case you're curious about where I'm coming from, I haven't reached maximum level and explored literally every single location that Fallout 76 has to offer, but I feel that after reaching level 40 that I have a pretty good grasp on the game now, and I feel pretty comfortable giving you guys an informed opinion on what I think of it. Also, I should probably say that if you're new to the channel, I'm mostly a Fallout related channel, so you may be interested to hear my perspectives on the game compared to a lot of my other fellow Fallout content creators. Otherwise, let's just go ahead and jump into this mess. To be honest, I feel like I'm having to walk on eggshells when talking about this game. On the one hand, I think there are a bunch of people within the Fallout community that are going to want me to praise this game and say that you should absolutely pick it up and not listen to any of the haters or ignore the backlash that's surrounding the game. To those people, I would agree to some extent that some of the criticisms that Fallout 76 has been getting at launch have been exaggerated. On the other hand, I think a lot of the criticism we're seeing online is definitely justified. Whether it's the lack of developed NPCs, the lack of an engaging narrative, the unnecessary and aloof retcons to the Fallout lore, ridiculous bugs that carry over from Fallout 4 like the lever action rifles reload, the ridiculous 54 gigabyte update for console users that still didn't fix major technical issues with the game, or just the lack of mod support at launch, all of those are valid reasons for people to be upset and are certainly worthy of criticism. Even if you're someone that likes Fallout 76, the game simply has too many things wrong with it to ignore, or worse, brush off by saying things like how Fallout 76 isn't supposed to be Fallout 5, and or it's just a spin-off. Over the past couple of months, I've been seeing that argument floating around and I can't deny that it really bothers me. Fallout New Vegas was also a spin-off, yet it has more in common with Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 than Fallout 76 does. I also wonder if this argument is being made to excuse Fallout 76's shortcomings compared to other Fallout games in the series, and if that's true, what a great way to sell people on a new entry from one of the biggest and most popular gaming franchises in the world. I mean, hey, it's just a spin-off. It's supposed to suck. It is what it is that Fallout 76 is always online, it has multiplayer elements, and is very different from other games in the series. But people really need to stop saying that it's not Fallout 5 to dismiss legitimate criticism. If we're all being honest, we all thought that Fallout 76 was going to be to Fallout 4 what Fallout New Vegas was to Fallout 3. And I also think it needs to be understood that people had really high hopes and expectations for this game for that reason, and it's understandable that so many people are voicing their disappointment. I mean, you've pretty much seen it all across Twitch, YouTube, and Reddit since the game's launch last Wednesday. Now, is this to say that there's anything wrong with liking Fallout 76? Of course not. In fact, I'll even admit that I like certain aspects of the game. Granted, I wish Bethesda had just added a lot of it to Fallout 4 since I really only play Fallout 76 solo, but the new and more varied biomes, some of the improvements to the settlement system with the camp, and the addition of some of the new weapons and gear is definitely cool. Heck, I even like the perk card system, and while I do have concerns about it appearing in future Bethesda games, the ability to swap to different skills and attributes on the fly is a nice feature. I'll even admit that I don't mind coming across random players while playing through the game. In fact, and at times, I found it was kind of neat to come across another person in the game world, and I do think if Fallout 76 was a single-player game with co-op added, it would have been a nice change of pace for the series, and could have made for a great game to play with friends. However, I think as many people are slowly coming to realize, Fallout 76 is pretty barren, its story is lacking, it features a lot of the same bugs as Fallout 4, and the endgame consists of taking on a dragon, or... I guess, well, the Scorch Beast from Skyrim. Now, to be fair, I guess I've known about the Scorch Beasts for a couple of months, but what a bizarre decision and thing to include for a Fallout game, and it honestly reminds me of something that you might have seen in Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, which was a game that potentially would have killed the Fallout series if Bethesda hadn't come along and revived it all with Fallout 3. I guess in a weird way, things have a habit of coming full circle no matter who touches the Fallout franchise.
Now again, I'm not knocking anyone that likes Fallout 76 or even likes aspects of Fallout 76 as I would agree that there are definitely things to like about the game, but for me personally, and a lot of other people that are voicing our opinions, we just kind of feel burned. The whole lead up to Fallout 76 has just been so weird too. It's like every time new information came out about this game, the fan opinion just got worse. For example, Fallout 76 is revealed, but the game has multiplayer. Fallout 76 is a new, unique, and fresh setting, but the Brotherhood of Steel are in the game and are going to break the lore. Fallout 76 can be played with your friends, but, well, your friends replace the NPCs. Or, Fallout 76 is going to get mod support, but you have to wait over a year in order to actually get it. It really is amazing how the communication and marketing for this game has been so bad that it actually made people less interested instead of more. And you know, no wonder why people are upset about Fallout 76. In fact, I don't even think Todd Howard or any of the rest of the development team liked this game since they were originally not even featured in the game's credits. Now, all jokes aside, I wanted to go ahead and film this just so you guys didn't think I was crazy and making this up. Because if you do go look at it now, they literally just patched this, so the credits now display correctly. But I suppose for posterity, we can say that along with a bunch of the other bugs, technical issues, and other problems with Fallout 76, somehow even the credits screen was bugged at one point. Now if you want my opinion, it's hard to say what's going to happen with Fallout 76 and the Fallout franchise in general. Because I don't think a lot of the backlash this game has generated and received is going to be just shrugged off in a few months' time. What we're seeing is a lot of different groups that really didn't like each other before Fallout 76 was announced become united to voice their dislike of this game. It's not just the diehard New Vegas fans or classic Fallout fans that hate all of Bethesda's Fallout games. It's a combination of Bethesda's single-player fanbase, Bethesda's modding community, the disaffected fans of Fallout 3 and 4 that didn't want multiplayer, the people that are upset about the changes to the Fallout lore, and a number of other groups and people that fit somewhere in between any or all of these camps. In my opinion, I think the backlash has gotten as big as it has because I think a lot of the general gaming community has picked up on a lot of the core fanbase's criticisms and added some of their own. Something else that I think is worth pointing out is that games, movies, and other forms of entertainment that get as wide of a backlash as we've seen with Fallout 76 don't tend to do well. If you look at what the backlash did to a game like No Man's Sky, a game that's actually improved considerably since its launch, the game has not been able to recover a fraction of the player base it once had. In the case of something like Destiny, Numerous backlashes over the years just burned a lot of the community, and even when they make positively received expansions like The Forsaken, people just don't buy it. Even in other forms of entertainment, movies like Star Wars The Last Jedi have basically obliterated the once ravenous and diehard Star Wars fanbase, and to go along with that example in particular, there used to be a saying that Star Wars is forever, and the sad thing is that changed when Disney got control. I think even if Fallout 76 is greatly improved as a game and becomes way more fun in a year or two down the road, I think the damage to the Fallout brand, at least for the time being, has been done. Maybe Bethesda can come back and wow us with Fallout 5 in like 7 to 10 years, but this isn't a situation like with Skyrim where people knew Elder Scrolls Online was clearly a spin-off. Fallout 76 was marketed as another entry in the series, and if Bethesda leaves off with Fallout 76 until Fallout 5 comes out, I feel confident in saying that the sales of Fallout 5 could suffer. After all, positive fan excitement and hype allowed Fallout 4 to sell as well as it did, and it banked off of the success and popularity of both Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. At the end of the day, what has happened with Fallout 76 and to the rest of the Fallout franchise is sad. Even if you really like 76, it's clear that it should have been handed to a team of more talented and experienced developers, or at the very least, it shouldn't have been co-developed with Battlecry, aka Bethesda Game Studios Austin, which is a game that's never managed to ship a game before, along with Escalation Studios, aka Bethesda Game Studios Dallas, which is a company that's mostly worked on mobile games. I don't have concrete proof, but I've got a feeling it was the B team that was put to work on Fallout 76, while the A team, which includes Todd Howard and company, are the ones that are working on Starfield. 
If you have your doubts about my theory on that, I think you should consider that it's happened before. Bethesda Game Studios worked on Skyrim, while Zenimax or other corporate-level people hired Obsidian to develop New Vegas. I think the viewpoint of the people at the corporate level at the time was that it didn't necessarily matter if New Vegas was good, which fortunately for the fanbase it was, the real focus at the corporate level was on the success of Skyrim, which ultimately ended up catapulting Bethesda Game Studios to new levels of popularity. It all starts to make more sense when you think about what's wrong with Fallout 76 for a second. Fallout 76 features a lot of the same bugs that are present in Fallout 4, and a lot of the assets, weapons, and enemies that were created for Fallout 4 and its DLCs were literally just copied and pasted over with no fixes. Other things, like the Scorch Beasts, were the product of leftover code from Skyrim that was still present in the creation engine. So, that was used to create a new creature for the game, regardless if it clashed with what makes Fallout Fallout. The Brotherhood of Steel was the same thing. Why make a new faction when you can reuse existing assets that you just made before? I really do get the impression that the goal with this game was to make it for as cheap as possible. Because if you really think about it, it explains why the story is kind of lame, it explains why there are almost no NPCs, and a lot of the voice acting in the game is kind of meh, and it also explains why there's just so much stuff copied and pasted from Fallout 4, regardless of whether if it makes sense within the Fallout universe or not. Whether you like this game or not, it's clear that it wasn't a passion project for Bethesda. If they really cared, they would have added a story, added NPCs, cared about internal consistency with the lore, and given us a game that was truly magnificent. And you know, maybe I'm not being fair to all of Bethesda's developers, and someone at the company is truly dying inside over Fallout, and what I would say to you is, you know, it sucks that fans and developers alike are in the situation we're in. No one wants a bad Fallout game, and I'm sorry it probably wasn't even your call. Now, I think the real question that remains at this point in this video is will Fallout 76 end up affecting Starfield? And if I had to take a guess, it's probably not going to. A lot of the fervor and backlash surrounding Fallout 76 is going to die down, and a lot of the people that are boycotting the game now because it's multiplayer and it doesn't have bot support are going to move on and pick up Starfield when it's announced. And to be honest, I think if Starfield turns out to be a good, fun, and popular game that a lot of people are smitten with, I wouldn't shame you for picking it up and playing it. Though, I will say, if there are any major controversies with that game, just remember what happened with Fallout 76. If there's anything I think we can all take away from this whole Fallout 76 situation, it's that you should always wait for reviews and get the opinions of a couple of different YouTubers, streamers, reviewers, and whoever else you trust before you pick up a game. While I would like to save Fallout and try to change things, the fact of the matter is, none of us can control what a massive corporation does. But you do have power over your wallet, and if you didn't buy Fallout 76 because you thought it looked dumb, you didn't like the changes to the lore, or you had some other issue with the game, I think you're the ones that won. Otherwise guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. I may make some more videos making fun of Fallout 76 in the future, but I think what I'm eventually going to do at some point is return to Fallout 4. To a certain degree, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I've neglected Borderlands for a little too long, so I may make some more videos on that, but I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. As always guys, your thoughts and comments are appreciated. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.